In the last few videos, we were solving uh, integrals with integration by parts, just using one application of it to get to our answer. And we'll see that that's not always the case that you can do that. Sometimes you need multiple applications of the integration by parts formula to finally arrive at an answer. And that's best demonstrated by an example. So what if I had the integral x squared times e to the 3x dx? Here, we have x squared. Previous to this video, I was always just making this function like an x to the first power, right? So when I differentiated it, I will just have you know du equals some constant times dx. Here, we're going to be left over with an x there. And I hope you can see ahead how that's going to be sort of an issue when we get to this part here where we have this vdu. It's going to leave us with still two functions here of x that we're going to need to deal with. And so what we'll have to do is, again, use the integration by parts formula on that particular integral until we finally get down to a situation where we don't have two functions in there um, in this, this integral here. So why don't I just move on and show you exactly what I'm talking about. If we let, and we know we can't do a um, u substitution, by the way. If you let u equal x squared, then you'll be able to substitute for this x squared, but then you get that the derivative of that is 2x dx, and there's nothing there to, um, in, to, to substitute for. We have an e to the 3x. We don't have another x there, and so you'll actually be introducing extra terms. That's not helpful. So we want to do an integration by parts, and we want to let u equal the function that is decreasing in degree as we differentiate. So we let it equal x squared, and then when we differentiate, we see that du is equal to 2x dx, and we'll let dv, right, it has to equal everything else that u doesn't equal. So that's e to the 3x dx. So e to the 3x dx, when you integrate dv, you get that v is equal to e to the 3x divided by 3. I hope you see why that's divided by 3. And then when we go and apply this uh, formula, we get the integral of x squared times e to the 3x dx is equal to u times v. Well, that's x squared times e to the 3x all over 3 minus the integral of v du. Well, v is e to the 3x over 3. Why don't I pull that out and put just in, in front because 1 third is, is a constant. But I'm multiplying that by 2x dx. So actually, I have to multiply that here. 2, but why don't, again, 2 is a constant. So why don't I put the 2 out front and just have x dx here? Okay. I have... This part here, that's fine. This integral here, though, I have, if I were to rearrange those terms, that's x times e to the 3x. Um, I can't use sub that. I have to do another application of integration by parts. So here, why don't I just sort of write that off to the side a little bit. If I have this um, integral here of x and times e to the 3x, why don't I say, let well, let's let u equal x du will then equal dx, and dv will be e to the 3x dx. Then that means v is just what we had before, e to the 3x over 3. And so what I'm going to do is come down here and sort of rewrite all of this here. We have this minus 2 thirds out front, and it's being multiplied by this second iteration of the integration by parts formula. So we have u is x, v is e to the 3x over 3 minus the integral of v du. This is e to the 3x for v over 3. I'm going to write one third out front. And I have e to the 3x. du is just dx. Now we see that we can solve this integral straight away. We don't need to do any further application of integration by parts. And we will go ahead and bring this down. And I will have x squared e to the 3x over 3. 
I'll go ahead and distribute this negative two thirds really quick. So this would be negative two x e to the three x over three times three is nine. And then I have negative two thirds times negative one third, that's positive two over nine, times this integral. That integral is e to the three x over three. And finally, we can add our constant. Now, I want to pull out any common factors here to simplify this, right? This is really messy. I don't like the way it looks. Um, so if we note, if we look at this, we will note that we have e to the 3x over 3 common to every term. This is it in this third term. In the second term, it's tucked away because you have a 3 in this 9 here. And then, of course, you have this e to the 3x over 3 multiplied by x squared. So I will bring out e to the 3x over 3, and I will um, have x squared for my first term, and I'll just be left with 2 thirds, right? Because this was a 9, I'm pulling out a 3, so it's 2 thirds x plus just this uh, 2 over 9 here, and then plus c. And that is our answer. And we see that it took quite a bit of work to get there because we had two applications, right, of the integration by parts formula. And so I'm happy to tell you that there is a special method we could use to make this type of problem a bit faster and a bit simpler. And it's called the tabular method. And so you can use the tabular method in a situation like this where we have some algebraic function that is raised to some power higher than one. So x squared or x third or um, x to the fourth. So how about I do the same problem but using the tabular method and we'll see how much faster we're able to solve that. So remember we had x squared times uh, e to the 3x dx and if I use the tabular method and I'll, I'll know I can use the tabular method because I have x squared multiplied by either an exponential or by a um, trig function. So what I want to do is let u be the algebraic function that decreases in, in degree as you differentiate. And I will let my dv equal e to the 3x dx as usual. Actually, the dx we'll see isn't even necessary, really. What we want to do for the tabular method is create a table. And so what we do is first we put on the left side our function for u, x squared. And what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate this. And we're going to write the derivative right underneath it. And then we're going to differentiate again, writing its derivative underneath it. And we're going to do it continuously until when we take the derivative, we get 0. And so we see here, this you take the derivative of 2, it's constant, you get 0. And so we've done all the differentiation we need to do. We come over on the right side, and we're going to write e to the 3x. And what we're going to do is the same sort of thing, except we don't differentiate, we integrate, right? So the integral of e to the 3x is e to the 3x, right, over 3. You integrate this again, you're going to get e to the 3x over 3 times 1 third. Well, that's going to be over 9. And we're going to do it just one more time, however many times you had to do to get to 0 when you differentiated. So we're going to get e to the 3x over, well, 9 times, well, 1 ninth times 1 third is... 127th. Okay, the next thing you want to do is these are the terms that you have that you're going to take their products. These are the terms that are going to be in your solution and you associate them not directly across, not this way, but you sort of move it down by one. So you go diagonally. So this x squared is going to be associated with this term. This 2x is going to be associated with that term and this 2 is going to be associated with that term. And, you know, this 0 would be associated if we had taken another integral, but it wouldn't be necessary because it's being multiplied by 0. So we don't need to do that. Next thing you want to do, or the final thing you want to do with this table, is to set up your signs. So the first is always positive. So what you're saying here by writing this plus, you're saying, look, the product of these two is positive. The next one, you alternate. You put these two are going to be negative, 
this one will be positive and you keep alternating however many times you need to. Finally, you get to write the product of these as a list and that will be essentially your answer. So this is positive x squared times e to the 3x over 3. This is negative or minus 2x e to the 3x over 9. And this is positive, right? 2 times e to the 3x over 27. Go ahead and throw in your constant there. And now we see we're pretty much where we were at in the last video before we simplified, but we got there a lot quicker. Now we just want to pull out this whatever common factors we have, which again is going to be e to the 3x over 3. Here you have e to the 3x over 3. It's tucked away in that 9. Here you have it. It's tucked. The 3 is tucked away in the 27. So we have e to the 3x over 3. It's being multiplied by this first term, x squared. The second term you have 2x over 3 or 2 thirds x, however you want to look at it. And here you have 2 over 9, right? You pull out a 3 from 27, you get 9 plus c. And we see that we get the same answer, of course, and it just was a lot easier to get to using the tabular method. And in future videos, I might do a problem, a similar problem where we could use a tabular method where um, maybe we'll have a higher degree power on x, maybe x cubed or x to the fourth. All right, see you in the next video.